to everyone. Today is one of my biggest pleasure to have with me Tati Ran. She's an amazing musician, but I want just to let her to introduce herself because she's wonderful. So hi Tati Ran, first of all, how are you? Hi, thank you uh, for having me here. Uh, well, I think I'm doing good, you know, uh, considering the times we are yeah. living in. So uh, yeah, all good here. Thanks That's a lot for good. having me. <laughs> that, that it is really an honor. Finally, we did it. So yes. I want to just, you are really, you, your story about musician is overwhelming and beautiful. So I want to start from the beginning. How Katy Run is like here, like in the powerful of folk music, because now you are like an, a, a symbol of folk music today. So I want to know how Katy Run started to approach herself to the music. Oh, well, then I have to go back a long time in time <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I have no background as a musician at all. I'm, I'm one of those people that also love to go to historical markets, fantasy yeah, markets, me, me too, yeah. like many of our listeners do, right? So, uh, but maybe I've just been a little bit of ahead of my time <laughs> uh, because, yeah, around 20 years ago now, well, more than 20, I'm embarrassed to say. Yeah, I, I got uh, captivated actually by an early historic theater show um, that also incorporated music on old instruments. Uh, this was a group called Omnia. Omnia, oh, wow, and, uh, I know that, amazing. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I had to speak to them after their show, which was then still a lot of sword fighting, actually, and just a few elements of music. And um, yeah, got to know them and basically got also to know all of uh, the things yeah. to do with old instruments, but also the pagan lifestyle, you could say. Yeah. And from there, uh, my journey started. So that has been quite early. Um, and then since around 2006-ish, yeah. I started, I wanted to play music. I wanted to also, you know, reproduce that feeling or yeah. that, that sound that I could hear inside of myself. I had no idea how to do it or where to start. But I just uh, picked out the nickel harpa, <laughs> not oh, exactly right. a beginner's instrument. But it's and, amazing. Uh, but you when play a lot. There. You play a lot of amazing and ancient instruments. Please tell me how you are able, because I'm trying to learn tagalarpa, the bass version, and it's yes. not easy. So no. just no. tell me how you are able to play and sing like an amazing, your amazing voice, play all these amazing instruments, and just for example, tell to people which type of instrument you are captivated with. But you you love playing. Yeah, I do, um, but also I'm a very um, enthusiastic person, which means I also tried out a lot of things, you know. I was just so captivated by everything that was going on around me that I wanted to try out everything. I was like a kid in a candy store, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Um, for me, I tried to have a more traditional approach. Yeah. And just to get the basics down uh, with learning what the hell is a key, what is a tuning, uh, how do you work with chords. But, uh, you know, I've always leaned to wanting to make my own songs and my own yeah. sounds. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, even though I, I picked up a lot of instruments, uh, this has always been, you could say, the thread through my musical expression is that I wanted to just make it sound like the speech of my soul and yeah. not per se uh, become very gifted in reproducing uh, fast polka, polskas uh, or yeah. traditional tunes and you, yeah that has that has been interesting because I don't think it was um, so easy to understand for everyone around me but I just kept doing my own thing 
and, um, and that's what makes you like kind of a unique artist that's, yeah yeah that's and, and also you can hear that also by your your works your music your album so speaking about that i want to do i, I don't want to go like you know in order because sometimes it's like uh, the the normal things like for the first the last and the middle i just want to you to let you speak about in your opinion your the album that most you can say represented first you're starting like your like the first that the 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 hurley cat Katy, and then yes. and, and the other one that really represented your evolution as musician composer well i think um yeah i think it is the evolution as a person because uh you know we go through different phases in life and yeah. uh, if you make music that is uh, an extension of yourself then automatically if you change the music changes and um i think that is that is something you can hear uh, if you would compare the first works with uh, the latest but yeah. also of course it's a development of better learning so help, me, help, me, help me with the title because i can i'm, not, I'm also unable <laughs> to pronounce that yes try it's amazing yeah. that album, it's amazing, it's, um, yeah. It's really good and I made it with uh, Christopher Yule together, uh, oh. who is most known for his work in uh, Valraven, early Valraven, um, Yusin and of course Heidung, which has blown yeah, up. Yeah. So uh, it's been fantastic to work with him and he has been there also for me at a crucial point in my musical development because uh, I was at a point where I had to persist uh, my vision and I wanted to continue an album but I had to continue by myself and he stepped in and together we made this yeah. so I'm very proud of that and I have some amazing friends on board there too so it's been a very special time period in which this was created it was the summer of 2015 and it's been this really intense two weeks in the studio day and night I can tell you we were just in a total magical bubble <laughs> that's amazing and, uh, yes, because it, yeah. we, when you prove you can say when you compose in my opinion because i've never been a, a composer if you compose folk ancestral ethereal music is a completely mm -hmm. way of composing like another another genre it's more like a, a sort of even meditation that can reach spirituality sometimes like a journey in my opinion this is what i always see in this the folk scene that is my favorite yeah. one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it's it's also a luxury uh, that we had at the time for this album because yeah. even yeah. though we worked a lot in the daytime, uh, I personally think that the mo the the best moments on the album we created at night because there's something else that happens for me when I create at night, and this is also how I do the latest two works, uh, Blood Billia and mm -hmm. Unner Mindit. These are really night pieces, like where you really night piece, moments wow. in the world it's start to Because I love no. this thing, I felt a shiver right now, like I want of chaos. I know what I will do later when I can't go home, put this album and watch to the moon. This is, you give me yeah. the perfect soundtrack for my, for my boots walking in the night. Well, that makes total sense to me, because it's, it's yeah. really been in that, that super deep of the night where everything falls silent that's where yes. something late at night is awake you know there's yeah. this, there's this like, funny a, like, like a something of you wakes up like a, another version of you wakes up and uh, yes. it has a softener like a softener so, softener uh, spirituality softener softener i don't know it's like uh, you have more creativity sometimes it's like for the writer or the poets They've maybe yeah. sometimes save more inspiration during the night, and people get yeah. weird about that. But no, for me, for me, it definitely. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. But if you will, if you would like to suggest to the to the fan, I know that everyone knows you, but you know there are the new generation of especially the the people the who loves folk music. They they give folk music for granted. You know, just like mm -hmm. folk music is all always associated with Vikings area, with um, I don't know, Viking metal. Then I'm not that has nothing to do with that. 
So for let them understand what really is folk music. Uh, on your Nordic folk music, which album of you or which song of you you would like to suggest to them? Well, I actually maybe I wouldn't even suggest a song of myself. I would suggest them to have a look at what inspired the musicians that they listen to uh, a lot today, because every musician also has had their influences and yeah. uh, also roots or cultural roots. Um, so I would actually more lean into, <laughs> yeah, try to look up some old folk acts from the 70s from Scandinavia and see what they wow. made, you know, or in the 90s, we have acts like Hetningarna, uh, Garmana, uh, everything Telu Turka did with Sudnaika, uh, multi vocal female choirs uh, with polyphonic spheres. These are incredible pieces. And I think it's for, amazing. well, at least some of uh, the artists that have been doing this for a longer time, they, they know these acts, they know these sounds, and, um, and they are on the rotation. <laughs> So um, yeah. still today, you know, so I, I would suggest them actually to look at some historical folk music from their own country as well as the Scandinavian countries, perhaps. Um, That's a good advice as well, because, for example, here in Sicily, we have folk music as well, you know, like the traditional music, uh, the folk yeah. traditional music. And sometimes we even forgot our roots. So but you gave it's a really good advice for people from every part of the world. But I want to know about your musical influences mm. now. Mm. Who inspired you? Yeah, who inspired you? Um, but many people did. M a lot musical way. influences, but also other type of influences. Like, I don't know, it could, it could be uh, the nature around you, the people surrounding you. Just so the musical and uh, we can say the other type of influences. Well, magic, magic inspired me, and um... that's a magic answer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, no, of course, uh, you know, in in the beginning of this talk, uh, I mentioned Omnia. Um, I definitely have to mention them again, as well as my first tutor on Niklarpa, uh, wow. which was uh, Oliver Satur. And they Oliver! Used to... Oh, I know Oliver. Yeah. It's a really, yeah. and they were my first band found, the first band I ever listened to, and that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, Oliver. Yeah, they are they are fantastic, and they are, they're they're really quite the veterans in this trade. Yeah. So yeah, they, these people uh, have been my friends and my family, yeah. and you know I've been with them for so many years. I uh, also have to mention the deep dive into the Nordic genre, and I think that. What really give, gave me a boost was um, spending time with uh, Valderaven from Denmark, the early project with Christopher Yule and Anna yeah. Katrin and Maria Franz, but also um, the first show that I saw by Vartruna on Viking Rock in 2010. Really beautiful. Um, yeah, these people, uh, they are known by now, um, but I also consider these people my friends. I'm very lucky in that regard. And, you know, whether it has been an insightful talk or some instrument tips or finding a specific builder, um, I see a tendency to help each other out uh, along yeah. the way. And I really, really like that. So it wasn't so. just my, my, I can say my, my, my thought that because in my interviews I've been with uh, Aldrim, um, um, so with um, Aspen, I've been with Matthew C, with all these people coming from, and they are with Runa Hill, they is like a big family. So you are confirming just that. So when I say, when they tell me that we are just like a big family, like in the Viking merchant, 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 something like that. So we're like a big family. You're just confirming what I, what I so that's why I like this. This genre yeah. because you see other other the label that is given to a band because it's not just playing music it's more than that yeah there's definitely community yeah. and you know it's funny because in my role in this community has also been jumping a little bit from island to island you know <laughs> with all these different band names and doing features here or there yeah. or you know uh, suggesting this or that um, 
I really like it uh, that there is this tribal feeling and uh, I can only hope that more bridges are being made, you know. Yeah, um, yeah because it yeah. Only, not only involves music, but a lot of cultural material that is really good to know. And about personal influences, like, I mean, like not personal, like yeah, personal, it could be elements or things that influence you when you compose or write your music. Well, yeah, I, you know, I think the, the composing moments that have kept or that I haven't trashed after I made it uh, has always been moments where, uh, yeah, the intuitive met the elemental or the spiritual. Uh, this, has been, this has been the strongest moments of composition. So these are the pieces that I uh, worked out professionally yeah. afterwards. So, um, direct inspiration um yeah it's a spiritual act for me to to compose so uh, and it's also it's not you know it, it's actually sometimes very good to put yourself aside yeah. and to just see uh, what comes through um, and that's that's one of the things uh, that happens deep in the night right yes of course <laughs> the subconscious and yeah. when and when you compose, there's something that you want to, um, I could say, communicate or say to the people through your music. I mean, which is your main message when you compose? If there is one, or is it just composing about uh, your inner self? Well, yeah, it depends on the piece. Um, yeah. Some of them have been just pushing through and really hard work. Uh, others have been uh, really about gathering knowledge and delving into historic sources but not just repeating them but uh, grasping something from there and shaping it into a new form yeah. that is relevant for me uh, or, well not me per se but for a thematic I work on so um, I think the inspiration is so broad and so in the moment um, and as I said, it's also about putting yourself a little bit aside so that the inspiration comes through. Um, so what exactly that is, I cannot really pinpoint it. I would call it source or spirit. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, yes. And, and, and what about, for example, because I also see your video clips that are stunning, surrounded by amazing elements. There is, I mean, some video clips that you really enjoy to to recording mostly um yeah i i enjoy i enjoy also the technical aspects and i enjoy also shooting a video clip in uh, in the snow <laughs> in, that one that i love voice. but that it's wonderful <laughs> it's relaxing it's relaxing yeah yeah, it's, uh, that has been a, quite an adventure because we uh, filmed it, well, we decided to film it only the day before uh, when we realized we only had about, with the weather conditions, one day of snow, maybe yes. two days of snow left. So we, uh, we just jumped in a van with a camera team and, yes. uh, and I was basically running for two days in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> It's been, it's, it's, cold. it's been it's uh, been it was cold but <laughs> I was kept warm just by moving so much. It's yeah, been a good uh, very but sometimes even workout. sometimes even the snow is not like so cold when you are for example in the city and it's winter yeah. there is no snow. Sometimes it's no. a little it's a less colder we can say. And uh, yeah. and if you um, now just it's a little bit tough sometimes this question for the band for the musician their interview but it's like a mouse, so, uh, so I have to ask you again, if I, is, if uh, I, in my opinion, I will, for example, ask you which type of, um, I don't know, poet or artist influenced you. So, okay, I will shape in this way, because actually I say pick five albums of band, but I will say just like pick five musician, artists, writer, poets, elements, everything that influenced you, because it's a different type of interview. So I want you just to include it, everything but well, more specific than you want very specific influences well it's hard to pick out one artist you you know i could say william blake or uh okay. you know people like that uh 
but I have to say I have to keep it a little bit more general because there's this okay. insane yeah. amount of books, you know, here. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I tend to lean back to artists and writers and poets uh, that are, uh, you know, a few centuries old. Yeah. Um, and I also uh, have been influenced influenced by friends that made music around me. Yeah, with touring with Omnia and Fauna by doing guest performances with other groups and by organizing, you know, some oh. specific workshops with Nordic speakers. Um, so it's just more been a hunt for knowledge, a hunger for knowledge. Yeah, I know what you're, and, what you know, you're mean. The, yeah. the expansion of, of self, then that I say, well, it's only been this artist or that album, and yeah. you can hear that directly back in, in my music. I don't think it's that easy to pinpoint for me. Um, but it is a mash of all of that. It's a mashup. It's a, it's a full lifetime, yeah. 20 years of uh, traveling and meeting people. And in uh, all these years, traveling and meeting people, creating connection, like a network, there is some maybe I want to say magical moment because sometimes all the time it's like funny moments, but I would prefer to say magical moment that you cherish for all these years. Maybe that you want to mm -hmm. share with, the, with with me and us and everyone who watched this interview. I think the magical moment, uh, one of the most magical moments, was when I heard uh, Nick Harpa being played for the first time. I understand the feelings. Yeah which was a beautiful instrument to look at. I had no idea how it worked, but it was something in the sound, you know, yeah. it's this dark, moody sound. Uh, yeah. It has resonating strings that vibrate along with the strings that are being played. And it just sounds like this melancholic, ancient Nordic soundscape just by making one bow strike alone yeah. already, You're you know? Completely right. There has been something in the sound of that string, of that horsehair on string, yeah. that just uh, called to me. And enough to say, what the heck is that? I want to learn to play it, you know? So, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it's that's beautiful. one of the one of the moments. It's the most, mm -hmm. the most magical moment, of course. And also, you know, that you had a lot, a, a lot of collaboration. And uh, I think one of the last things, correct me if I'm, because with the names, Nordic names I'm still learning because I want to learn with Gal, that's right? Yeah, Gal. What about yeah. this collaboration? Because uh, I'm really a fan of him as well. Yeah, isn't it fantastic? <laughs> I yeah, love I love yeah, with yeah, him. It's, it's yeah, I don't know, it, we have a funny uh, understanding. Yeah. We don't need a lot of words, words to both of us. We just sort of nod and we know and we just work from there. That's and great. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things that's hard to put to words. Um, yeah. By naming it, it, it loses something. But I'm very blessed. Uh, no, blessed. Yeah, blessed to blessed work with Blessed by him. the gods. <laughs> A plural, not singular. It's you. You navigate towards each other uh, or to some people because there's something in your frequency that just uh, yeah. resonates and pulls, and it just the wants to, something wants to be created. Yes. And that that's also a feeling that I hunt. Uh, the manifestation in... of your of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The alignment, yeah. 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 yeah we, so in, in the private we can share some tips about the... <laughs> We can. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we can talk about Nick Larpa yeah. and yeah, uh, so, after. <laughs> yeah, because of course uh, I will ask you, oh my god, I'm confused about Talarpa. I was just wrong with that, I'm wrong with that. <laughs> Because we are trying to build one from zero, from the tree of here, you know, from Sicilian trees to buy. Yeah. So for I have like a kind of unique sound, but it yeah. would be like an adventure. So it would be like really an adventure, but it's even better because you did it by your own hands with the, the material from here. So it also have your own spirituality, your essence that uh, your energy that instrument yeah 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 i i love it when you're involved in in yeah. building instruments uh, yeah for I, sure. I, 
I'm seeking that out also a lot. I like to be closely involved in my instruments, yeah. even to the point where I ask a builder to just, uh, instead of building it for me, I, I want to come to this wood workshop and <laughs> build it with him or her. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, drilling out shells <laughs> from yeah. the ocean. Yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Just before ending the interview, I just wanted to know about the future project you have, like album or live shows if you have something planned already yes, yes um i do uh, i have kept making new music and yes. i've yeah. also worked for some tv and film productions which really? will see, yeah it will see the light of day a little bit later than i can share here now okay. but that that has been a really nice thing to to work on uh, with a amongst other a scottish director and people from la really really nice uh, folk and people that are quite professional so that has been very good for me because i could contribute some historical instrument expertise and you know yeah. they uh, could teach me what they do on their end of the chain, sort of, sort to say, in producing uh, yeah, it's an exchange. New, new yeah. things. Yeah, it's an exchange, and and yeah. and I love that to expand into new areas and new people. Yeah. That's why mm. we are trying to do as well to expand, mm. like going through digging as well, like I was saying, culture, or even trying to interview some actors to see their yeah. side, the, their musical side. Because it's like yeah. an exchange, just not focusing only on that, but exploring. Because oh, that's yeah. when you keep them, when you become more interesting to the to the people. And about exactly. uh, and about gigs, live gigs. Live concerts, I haven't played for some time, uh, okay. for many reasons, uh, business and personal. Uh, but I've always kept it in the back of my mind. You know, it's funny because I I see so many things of how I want to do it. Yeah. So that sometimes becomes already quite con concrete before uh, before it's been booked on a stage, um, but uh, it's something that is in development. Um, okay. at, least, uh, at least here, there's a lot going on with plans. So and, let's uh, hope to see that all yeah. soon. I hope to see you soon, <laughs> really, in some gigs and some concerts and. Just, uh, I don't know, maybe I will have my talarp and we can play something together or just uh, talk about moon and uh, whatever. <laughs> it's spiritualism because it's cool when you are able to share these things with someone because it's also, also an energetical sharing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, as well. Yeah. So if you want just to say a message to especially all the people that are completely away from folk music and their roots, their tradition, because I think that the there is no people better than you that could give them an advice like to get closure with the roots, ancestor, spiritual side, because it's really important, especially in music. Just, just that. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not such a simple question you're asking, but I will try to give strong answer. I think it's about listening, yeah. uh, tuning in, tune out the noise, uh, whether you approach an instrument for the first time or listening to a song by some artist or trying to find your own creative angle uh, to express yourself, yeah. through, whether it's through music or yeah. another creative thing, you know, it can also be another art form. I think we first have to learn to listen and to tune yes. out the noise. Mm. Okay. So thank you so much, Kati. We finally did the interview and it was amazing because it's really like a chilling, relaxing, like uh, like a, 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 a non, you can say like a calming interview. Like really, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like a little bit, you know, like in an um, anxiety mood before and now I'm completely calm. You can work, have you, have you ever thought to work like a, a therapist? Well, you, you can be successful at like that. I am a professionally trained therapist, but you really, uh, you are. Okay, that's <laughs> good to know. That's good to know. Really, believe uh, me. It's funny you picked up on that, but yeah, listening is once again the teaming. So that's uh, why I've been calm because mm -hmm. because you are the okay. So I understand now why I'm calm. So thank you so much for helping me to come now. You're most welcome. Um, yeah, let's chat about some uh, Nick Harper for you after the interview, and uh, yeah. this has been fun. Yeah. yeah, really to be really fun, and then of course, 
uh, thank you so much for watching us and look everything you can for Katiron. I will put on everything under the videos in the description will be our website, uh, some video, everything there. And uh, for other questions, just ask to ask straight to Katiron. And yeah. uh, always, mm -hmm. always try to keep yourself in folk music because you get get mistaken then. So thank you so much, Katie. Hope to see you soon in a live uh, occasion. And thank you again. Bye. Most welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.